Welcome to What's the Finish, our weekly podcast where we talk to experts and individuals just like you to discuss not only the flavors and finishes of spirits and foods, but also all the flavors life has to offer along with the magnificent finishes they bring. So join our host, David Affariot, as he asks the question, what's the finish? David Affariot and Jeff Sissall, and we're here for What's the Finish? This is our podcast about the flavors of life and how it all should be enjoyed and taking these experiences from the beginning all the way to the finish. So welcome. We're thrilled to have you. And I'm thrilled to welcome you into my kitchen. Um, this is a space where I go for uh, to be happy. It's a space where I go to to be um, to really kind of go through some meditation on my own where I can slow down the day bring it to an end um, and do the kind of methodical things I need to do to create a meal but for me you know step through and and with every chop and every slice uh, bring myself to end the day and be with my family and have them enjoy uh, the fruits of of my meditation okay. so yeah uh, Jeff why don't you say hello yeah, well, hello, David, and I'm excited for this. This is very exciting. It looks like we got a great meal going. What are we having tonight? What to describe to All right. So let's we'll get it right into it. Um, what I'm making is uh, it's kind of a Mediterranean simple dish. It's it's uh, it's a salmon, which I'll go through how I prepared, but it's been uh, glazed, it's been smoked, and then it's been flash uh, flash cooked. Wow. Um, so it has a beautiful many layers of depth to it, and that's going to be served over a kind of a per Persian rice that's got lentils and uh, raisins to it. Um, and then I've made a kind of caramelized uh, fennel and spring onion uh, confiture that will be part of what the fish kind of rests on. Nice. Um, and then I've made a little mezzis. Little mezzis are like little tapas um, that are pretty simple. One is a uh, a smoked eggplant baba ganoush, which I made on my big green egg uh, just outside out of view here. You don't want me to bring this in the camera. It's big. <laughs> um, and then some hummus uh, that was freshly made. And then I'll do the final dressing for you with. And, um, and then some olives. I know I also have some cut vegetables. So we'll kind of step through all this and the flavors that are going to be. So then I have a kind of, um, I have a salad of cucumbers, spinach, and tomatoes with uh, a vinaigrette. Uh, dressing that's also made from a tahini um, base. So I love making a tahina, which you have to break it down from what you buy in the store. You have to break it down because it comes kind of in concentrate. And we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, and I'll bring out the fish, which is finished. Actually, let me turn the fish off here. That sounds great. So the uh, the preparation. It sounds like there's a lot of preparation here. Um, so you got some stuff done ahead of time, which is great because it'll it'll help us kind of get to the main part, um, which I love. But um, what what is the biggest flavor that you're looking for here, David? Um, well, I look for like layers of flavor and um, I love to cook in a Mediterranean style. So um, very clean. And um, I also cook with color. It's got to have color on the plate. The more color mm. there is, the more intuitively I know it's healthy for me. I mean, can you imagine, do you, you, you know, you, you look and you see some of these commercials that are on TV and everything is this horrendous, solid color of right. like chicken tenders and bread and fries. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I, I, I look with shock at just how, how awful that is. But therein lies a really important lesson. You know, whatever is mass marketed to you, That's like right. one of these fast food chains or what have you, is likely not good for you. And that... I mean, give me an instance where something that is so heavily marketed to you actually is good for you. It's not McDonald's. You I know. know. We talk about this all the time. They make it easy and cheap to buy things that aren't good for you. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it takes exactly. a little effort. So it does. So part of our lives have to be spent ignoring messages that come to us and then finding experiences or finding the things that we have to curate. And sometimes that's easy. I mean, I, I learned from Anthony Bourdain and his books that I read, you know, know your local fishmonger, know this guy by name, know your butcher, know that guy by name. When he walks in, he should say, hey, I remember, at least I remember you, yeah. you know? Um, so I do, I walk to a, uh, I don't walk actually, it's a, a drive, but I walk into the, the, a farmer's market that's a good half an hour away. And, but that's what I have to do, you know, to, yeah. to, to, 
And so, but I will walk in and the guy knows my order. It's like cowboy ribeye, you know, okay, great. How many? Um, and so, yeah. So let me describe, I'm, I'm going to pull out the fish and then obviously we're going to have a little tasting of, sure. of the champagne and describe how all that comes together. So you excuse me here, I'm going to pull out the fish. Um, let's see. Ooh. All right. So I got really fancy on you, Jeff. You did the fish. The fish comes um, on a cast iron container here. Nice. That looks, that looks like a fish. It does. Isn't that great? That right? is great. No, and so great. What, what I like to do is I love to cook things inside, like um, you know, a, a collard green or a leaf of spinach or uh, some kind of lettuce because it does two things. One, it just imparts a lovely flavor, you know, into the um, in, into the item that you're cooking. Yep. And um, and it tastes great. And I drizzled it with a little bit of olive oil and uh, a spice that uh, it's called sitar, which I'll, I'll talk about in, later in a little bit. But here, here's, so here's the fish. So how far did you cook that, David? I mean, people like their salmon different ways, right? So how, what is your level of it? Are you medium? Are you a little more well done? Are you lightly done? How, how do you look, like to cook that? I do it very lightly. I do it very, very lightly because uh, I want as much, I want as much juiciness, but, um, and, and then if I have any leftover, then I know that I can still reheat it at least one more time and get a good, you know, use out of it. That makes sense. Um, so here's how I prep the salmon. This, this ladies and gentlemen, you'll want to take notes. Um, this is the best way to convert, you know, great fish to unbelievable heights. And even regular fish that you might buy, you know, if you don't know your fishmonger, uh, and if you go to a regular grocery store, just don't buy, you know, frozen or anything. Just buy as fresh as you can. Yeah, I totally you agree with home. that. Yeah, yeah we, buy right. we buy everything fresh. So That's right. So bring that piece of fish home. Um, you can trim it if you want, you know, to get it even. You want something that cooks evenly and not sometimes salmon has like a big roll and then it comes to a tapered end there. Right. You want to cut that tapered part off so it all just cooks evenly. And so you've trimmed the fish that you now have. Um, and here's the secret. I don't care if it's white or red, but with red, with a red fleshy piece of fish like Arctic char or salmon, which is what we have here, you'll want to take a little bit of salt, like kosher salt, and you want to spread it over the the unbaked, the unmade, you know, the raw fish. Just sprinkle it so it's a nice even from on high, a nice even coat of, of uh, salt. And then take up about a tablespoon of sugar. And again, kind of tap, 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 confectionate sugar, not confectionate sugar, but in a tap, tap, tap style, like let it snow a bit of sugar all over, you know, the piece of fish that you have. So I'm going to back you up for a second. Do you, what kind of salt do you use? Because there's Himalayan salt, there's, you know, uh, there's uh, sea salt, there's regular salt. What, what do you prefer? I hear this is a big one. Mor uh, Morton's kosher salt. Oh, kosher salt. All right, great. Awesome. Great. Okay. It's, good, it's good to know so, right? because there's all these different salts, right? And they all have different oh, yeah. intensities. Salt, a little bit of sugar, walk away for 20 minutes. Okay. 20 minutes later, when you come back, you will see all this liquid that's been pulled by the sugar and the salt out of the fish and kind of sitting there and pooling and dripping down the side. And that's great. But you, what you then want to do is take that fish and run it under a, a, the water faucet, run it under water. Okay. Make sure all that sugar and all that salt kind of gets washed away. Okay. And what you're, what you're left with, what I'm doing this is that it's tenderized the fish for about 20 minutes and it's pulled a deeper color from, from within the fish to the surface. And, and visually, that's what you want to see. Like I said before, you cook with color. If you do this to a red piece of fish, you will pull a deeper color Neat. of red out of that fish. And so automatically now it starts to look even better. And it looks absolutely stunning. Um, if it's a white fish, all you're doing is still, you're, you're getting excess liquid out of the piece of fish. Okay. And that gets rid of that fishy, watery kind of uh, taste that some people really don't like, you know, uh, um, when they eat fish that's not cooked well. So... You want to pull that water out. Then it doesn't matter if you run under the sink, it gets wet, obviously. So then pat it dry with paper towels, paper, paper, towel, towel, dry, dry, dry. And now it's really ready to be, uh, to be cooked. And so what I did with the salmon is, was after that stage, I take a little mixture of soy sauce and either maple syrup, or you can use honey, or you can use, um, what did I use? Oh, I used brown sugar. So brown sugar 
and a little bit of soy you know sauce the better quality soy sauce you buy the better the results going to be so you mix it in and then i take a brush that looks like this silicone brush that looks like this right and then you're just brushing you're brushing this onto the fish and getting this beautiful like the, the soy gives it a little marbled kind of deeper color and that's great so there's some steps in preparation here so um the next thing i do for extra credit is I will put it into a pan and actually what I do before then, oh yeah, this is what I do <laughs> in, in, in a pan, in a cast iron pan. Like I use a lot of cast iron. So let me show you how the cast iron pan. Um, I think cast iron is great to cook and I love it. I got several sizes. It, it's great, you know, intruder alert. It'll, you know, just yeah, right? <laughs> KO somebody if you can get your hands on it. Um, so cast iron like this, and I have like little wood, I have wood chips. You can buy them in the grocery store. Sometimes they're bourbon flavored or all sorts of different flavor and they're wood chips. And so I will put wood chips into a pan like this on high heat with a cover and I'll burn that, that wood. And yeah, it'll stink up the house. It'll open up your windows. But from those, if I get it, you know, going and it starts to go and someone in your family or somebody says, what the hell, what the hell something's burning, what's going on? Be like, it's okay, it's okay. So high heat to, to really get some burn going. Okay. Um, I, I then will put the fish like into one of these aluminum plastic pans. I had a big, I had a big one. You don't need something this big, but something like this, Okay. right? All right something so that's like, like a this. nine by 13 pan. Correct. And okay. it often comes with a, it often comes with a cover. So I was cooking, you know, uh, you know, this this was a small piece of fish, but it was part of a larger piece of fish. Um, and so all of it fit in here. And so uh, it goes into this pan. The wood chips that were burning now go inside of here. The fish is not even cooked yet. OK, so the, the, the wood chips go in here and then you cover the aluminum with the cover that it comes with and you let that sit either in the refrigerator or you can let it sit out for an hour. It'll be fine, okay. right? So now all this smoke is circulating on the fish. It's it, the smoke is getting on the cut on the top of it. It's settling in and it's imparting this wonderful flavor. So when you do get ready to cook this fish um, on a hot skillet, uh, okay. it goes into the pan. Sorry, it goes into an oiled cast iron skillet like this oil. Okay hot so it's those oils almost smoking um and then the fish goes on top you can cover the fish or leave it open but you don't flip it it stays and by the way this is salmon with the skin on okay because uh, i love the skin i love to see it turn to char and it's almost burned on the bottom from the right. skin and the heat winds coming you know the heat comes up and cooks the fish but no more than like eight minutes seven minutes Got it. um and you never flip it. Don't do not flip it. So it'll cook and it comes out beautiful. And I'll plate this in a second here and we'll see. But that's the fish, right? So then um, take something simple here. I've got like a head of I've got a head of uh, a broccoli, which I'll prepare in a second. Um, <laughs> and what else have I got? Um, here's the rice. Okay. And so what kind of rice is it? So again, I have these pieces of, uh, you know, in my, I get a box of, uh, I get a box of produce every week. And sometimes I can't use all of it, you know, but sometimes there's some, you know, collard greens or things that I don't usually eat, you know, or make. Um, and when I get something like this, like these collard greens, I'll at least use them and infuse the flavor um, from them on, uh, on everything. I'll put it on top of the fish. In this case, I'll put it in rice. So the rice is just regular basmati rice um, that you can prepare. And then I add raisins to it. I'll also make uh, French lentils, those little green lentils, just yep. to add some texture. Nice. And um, here I've also cut up some squash and there's some zucchini in here. So as I move this around, you'll see. That's there's great. some red pepper in here. There's some, you know, large, just lots of different things. Like, oh, there's a mushroom I found, right? <laughs> so when I mean, you know, like I have some mushrooms that come in the box, the mushrooms go in here. Um, sometimes I'll cook the mushrooms separately and then add them to the rice so that I can give them a bit of a char. The same thing goes with the vegetables. 
I'll give the vegetables, you know, in the in the cast iron or out on my green bean, green, big green egg, or my I have an air uh, I have an air fryer too, and that gives a nice burnt on the vegetables. Then they go in the rice. I don't cook the I don't cook the vegetables in the rice until after they're first cooked. Then it all sits together, and the longer that can sit around, the better. Yep. Yeah, it gives right, you that so, depth of flavor you've been looking for. Yeah, I get to I get to yeah the components of it instead of just all. They, they come together, not not necessarily cooking together, but they retain their own you know unique properties and then they're put together and together they they make something pretty special. And this rice is great. Um, and then over here, I started cooking on as low a possible heat as you possibly can. Um, this is uh, like a spring onion. Spring onions are really big. They're in the farmers markets and everywhere. Now you take a little bit of your best olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, put it into a smaller pan like this, chop up the onions. Um, I also add fennel, just a very small piece of fennel, like a finger's worth of fennel. Mm -hmm. Chop it up. And it all starts to, when you caramelize something, there's caramelization, which is cooking from the inside out, okay. as opposed to sauteed onions, which often are just cooked on the outside, but they don't heat all the way through to the inside. And so that's where you can get heartburn or you can get something, you know, Mexican restaurants are, I don't want to categorize them as entirely like this, but it's where you can, you know, you get a real onion taste. But if you caramelize the onion at low heat for like, I'm talking like at least two and a half hours, three or four is even better. Um, and you leave it alone, it will on a nonstick pan, it'll kind of burn and, and char naturally a little bit, um, but not too much, especially covered. It won't, it'll stay moist enough. And it cooks from the inside out and it turns into this beautiful texture and wonderful flavor. But that's great. Most onions, you just, when you taste, you're like, that doesn't taste like an onion. Yeah, right. So that's, it looks amazing. So I'm here we go. Excited to see it all plated. So um, every recipe from a great cookbook that we'll talk about in a future episode, like we'll have another episode when we just talk about cookbooks, right? Oh. Um, that, and we could talk about, we'll, we'll dissect some of these. And I think that'd be a great feature while, <laughs> while drinking champagne yeah, and yeah. dissecting, you know, cookbooks. Um, and I, so a preview for those listening in the comments, put in your, your comments about um, Bum -ba -dum favorite cookbook and we'll, we'll make sure we, we, we break it down. Um, but there's one cookbook that's one of my favorites. It's called uh, Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat. And every dish has got to have that. You've got to you know, salt every dish to taste. It's got to have an acid, um, which for this fish is often a squeeze of lemon at the very end mm -hmm. for that brightness. The salad that we have is going to have this really wonderful vinaigrette to it. Um, and the, the fat is the olive oil that's, uh, that's in the, the uh, sauteed or the caramelized onions. Um, there's also a bit of fat in this tahini sauce that I've made and, um, heat, obviously the heat, you know, that we talked about yep. but via the smoke and via the high heat. So let me, I'm going to start plating a little bit of this before I do, let me bring into view. This is, um, I also cook in a way where we have like little mezzies, little, uh, appetizers. And, uh, this is my favorite, um, spice. It's called sumac. And I literally put it on almost everything, um, much to, uh, actually, to no one's complaint. <laughs> I just yeah, literally yeah. put it under, right? So um, what sumac is, is, sumac imparts like a lemony flavor. And it's a derivative of, of all things, if you can believe it, poison ivy. But, but I'm, I say that, and I, that scares everyone, but I'm right. telling you, it, it will not give you hives or anything like that. It is a completely, and I say like a distant it's like a distant in the same genus as you go down, but that's like <laughs> saying chimpanzees and humans kind of thing. I, yeah. I um, but we digress. So the, the hummus is, is made. We'll talk about how to make that maybe in a future episode. These are just some lovely uh, olives, which are great. Two different kinds, the cata, um, not for, canastro, canastro, canatano, I don't know, the green ones. And then, <laughs> um, what are the other ones? The other ones are um, Kalamata. Kalamata are the brown, are the brown ones. Yeah. And olives are great. Just love olives. Um, 
this is the hummus. Obviously you can use bread or, but I like to keep the carbs down sometimes and I'll just cut fresh fruit or excuse me, fresh fruit. This is um, yellow pepper. Awesome. Uh, yellow peppers are like fresh fruit to a certain degree. They're so sweet. These are Avignon radishes, also in the farmer's market of late. Nice. Just give them a little peel, take out the brown spots, and then put them like in a little bit of salted water. And I mean, when was the last time you really wanted to eat a radish? I'm telling you. Yeah. They're delicious. That's great. All right, so there's a lot of stuff here. So we got appetizers going. We got the main course all set up here. And uh, I'm excited to see how you're going to plate all this. Okay, so we'll play. I'll see how I played it. Last thing to kind of mention is um, olives, hummus. This is the baba ganoush, which is like a, two eggplants put on the big green egg, extreme heat, like 500 degrees. And they sit on the coals and they kind of, they get, they, they start to expand, expand, and then they kind of explode. They don't really explode, but they make a pop sound. And like, you can see where it just burst open. Okay. At that point, you take, you know, metal uh, tongs and you lift the gently, <laughs> this exploded eggplant out of the big green egg. And you put it into a bowl and let it cool a little bit. And then you take a spoon, like even a wooden spoon, a big, big fat wooden spoon, and you you cut into the top of the eggplant, kind of open it up, yep. pull as much of the skin off as you can, and then scoop out the innards, leaving the skin that's all black, and then pull out the pieces that get stuck to it. Pull, scoop all of that out, put it into a bowl. You can mix it with Greek yogurt, or you can make yourself you know, tahini by breaking down um, store-bought tahini with ice, lemon. That's another recipe we'll get into later. But... There's plenty of recipes for making tahini. It'll show you how to do it. And you can use Greek yogurt, mix it in, salt, pepper, and you have this beautiful eggplant, you know, that I add a little bit of uh, parsley to. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Bam. And so this last part right here is a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And za'atar. Okay. Zatar, Zatar is an Israeli kind of, uh, it's like every, it's, you know, this is interesting. Every culture has like a spice mix. Like what is curry? If you ask somebody, what is curry? Well, curry is what? It's actually a combination of all these different things like cardamom, cumin, uh, turmeric, all these things mixed in about three other, four other things all put together. And so, or it's like saying in Mexico, like salsa, what is Right. It also comes in many different kinds. It can be so many percentages of all these sort of things. So za'atar is a combination of sesame seeds, oregano, pepper, lots of different things that go into it. But it's got a wonderful, I mean, a good za'atar is something to truly cherish. Um, and so I'm using that as a small bit of drizzle along with the lemon. Always have to have some lemons here. Where's my lemon? Um, there we go. Always have, always have fresh lemons ready to cut and slice and squeeze. So let's plate, let's plate the fish. I'll show you how all this is done. So right here on the bottom of the screen, I've got the leaf that the fish was cooked in, right? Okay. Okay. Um, I should have, oh, here they are. I have some, you know, good silicone tongs. Tongs are better than fingers. Yes and they'll keep you from getting burned, mm -hmm. right? So we'll take one of the pieces of fish here that have been lightly flavored with the uh, sumac and oh, there it goes. Or what I can actually do is here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take some of the uh, caramelized onions and I'm gonna make a small little pillow. This is the fennel and spring onions. And so now I'll take the fish, place it right in there. Yes. See that? Right? Um, then where's my spoon? Here's my wooden spoon. This is a non-stick pan, right? So the last thing you wanna do is put a metal spoon into a non-stick pan and scratch a non-stick pan because then it becomes sticky. So we don't do that. 
Um, but I could put a little bit of rice with a vegetable here. Right, just a little bit goes a long way. Yep. Okay. Um, and so then if you see me over here, this is my, this is my lemon. <clears throat> lemon over everything really, it's fantastic. Lemon over here, whoops, lemon on here. <clears throat> it's fantastic brightener. And then this is the tahina that I, I made yesterday. Okay. Uh, and so it just goes over the top. Look at that, oh man. Wish we were in the same room, David. That's all I gotta say. We're not in the same room. I'm telling That's you, my that. friend. I'm telling you, you would. Uh, I can't. I can't wait for you. I can't wait for you to. I can't wait to. Yeah. Have you for dinner? I'm oh. uh, sorry. Have you over for dinner? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this, That's isn't a, amazing. this is not a Hannibal Lecter way to read that. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> invite. Um. So now we're we're only like maybe we're at the like the. You know, we're at the 10 yard line here and the goal is in sight, but we're, you know, if, if we can't get the ball to the end zone, this is not going to work. Right. That's so right. we've got bases are loaded, but two outs and we haven't, we haven't done anything yet. So what's left to do <clears throat> is to pair it with some champagne. I love it. What are, what are we pairing it with today? What kind? Well, we're lucky here because I'm um, feeling, feeling pretty special. Um, and this is the, this baby here is the 2012 Andre Tessier. Nice, nice, nice. Well, the good news is I actually have some of that here. So I do get to share that with you. Oh, sweet. So I'm okay. excited. <laughs> All right. So again, it's, it's organic, it's certified organic. The symbols here at the bottom show you that uh, these are the symbols for champagne and for a particular agricultural audit for all of France's produce, meaning the one that looks like that's not looking like a triangle. You're the yeah. one on the eh, hard to see, but that one goes on chocolate, bread, cognac, raisins, fruit, vegetables, anything that follows the audit of a sustainable. And then the other one is very specific to champagne, only for champagne products. You follow a certain another audit, 90 items altogether that are measured. Um, can you then qualify for that stamp? So that's great. Now, so so let's let's bring out uh, every chef has a tasting spoon. There you go. Every every chef has a tasting spoon, right? So quick story. Um, this is my tasting spoon. I'll put it in this camera and I'll put it right here. Okay. Um, th this is one of those yogurt land kind of frozen yogurt, you know, uh, exactly that they about. used they used to hand out, and so. Every time I would take my daughters to, you know, let's go for yogurt, daddy, boom, we go and we'd save them. And these things are really sturdy and I've, they've been washed a thousand times, but I have like, you know, usually three or four of these yep. in a pot, in a pocket up here and take a little taste of something and then put it in the dishwasher or whatever. But um, <laughs> these are, these are my tasting spoons. That's so um, we can smell the wine and then we'll taste the food and then we'll taste the champagne. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is good. Yeah. So I'm going to put a, compose a little bite here of the rice. Mm. Not going to stop there. I'm going to dig into the fish and these caramelized onions. Mm. You are making me hungry, sir. You are making me hungry. <laughs> wow. And now, a la bonne vote. That's good stuff. Okay, so immediately, awesome. you know, the fat and the rich and the richness of the salmon and the richness of the tahina sauce on top of it yeah. is getting cut. Like we used, I squeezed lemon a little bit on there, right? right. So the lemon yeah. is slicing into the thickness of this fish and the creaminess of the tahina and the, and the richness of the caramelized onions. And all of this is like... The lemon is doing just a little fraction and then in comes the champagne and the champagne is like cutting and bouncing off all these flavors. And so I get lemon coming out of this 
in a way that I usually don't. But I also get this, there's a beautiful kind of sherry note to this particular champagne. So it's 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 like accenting the un, the caramelized onions and a little bit of the endive. And it just feels like I'm in a garden, like I'm drinking a garden. Oh, wow. mm. And uh, man, <clears throat> woman and child is this good. <laughs> So what what an amazing finish. What an amazing finish. That's the best part about it. Right? You know? And you could be watching this on a Tuesday. It's actually Monday. This is a Monday. You know, but whatever you're watching this, I mean, um, yes, does this seem like a lot of work? It can. But can it also appear to be meditative a little bit? It can if you get to the right approach to it. If you approach things like, oh my gosh, I have to have a recipe for everything and it's got to tell me what to do. All right. Well then you're, you're starting off from a, listen, that's how you start off to make a routine turn into a rhythm. Then that's what you have to do. Certainly that's what I did. I guess starting out, but eventually you get to a point where flavors are, are like clothes, you know, what to wear and what combinations to pair right. as opposed to, you know, putting plaid on plaid or, or doing craziness, you know, yeah. that, with things that just don't work, but you'll get a signature style of what spices to go to and then following simple rules like a cookbook who can teach you that every dish has got to have salt fat acid and heat what are you going to do how are you going to do that you start to break things down and then good knife skills all this we'll talk about you know we'll have a whole section on knives so we'll have a whole section on knives we'll have a whole section on cookbooks and we'll be dissecting everything with champagne i love it i love it david this has been amazing um, again, I wish I was in the same room. I'm, I'm coming down to you soon. We're going to do this together. It'll be a lot of fun, but, but I'm excited for it. I'm excited for, for what's the finish. I'm excited for, for uh, Evid Vines and, and all the things that it brings and all the champagnes that it brings uh, and the flavors that it brings. And then, you know, that's what it's all about, right? It's all the flavors of life. So we're excited Absolutely. to be able to do this. Absolutely. A la bonne vote, my friend. Uh, santé and uh, bon appétit, of course. Sounds great. All right. Thanks so much, David. We appreciate it. We'll talk again. Thank you. Take care. Subscribe. Yes.